In this video, I'm going to take you through the installation of a Zappi EV charger, right from unboxing, setup, installation, and then finally into the configuration into Home Assistant. If that's something that's of interest to you, then stick around for the video, thanks. I bought myself a Tesla Model Y a few weeks ago. Uh, I've been charging it from a 13 amp plug top in the UK and it's been taking about 14 hours to, um, to fully charge. So what I've done is I've bought myself the EV charger. Um, in this video, what I'm gonna do is take you through the installation of that. First of all, the unboxing, show you everything that's in there, installation, the cable route that I've done, and then finally the setup of the Zappi itself. So um, you can see how that's done. And then I'll go into the Zappi app and show you how I've configured the scheduling. And then the last thing obviously is the integration into Home Assistant and what I'm doing there. So if there's any particular section in the video that you are more interested, then feel, feel free to move on to that chapter. Thanks for watching, bye for now. So what I'm gonna do now is take you through the unboxing of the Zappi. So I unboxed this a couple of days ago and just doing the voiceover now. Um, comes in a big cardboard box, as you would expect. The nice thing about it is there's no non-recyclable packaging in there. So there's no plastic or foam or anything like that. It's just all cardboard, which is great. So that flap on the right-hand side, we'll come back to that later. That's the template used to fix the zappy to the wall. It's got some drill holes in there that you can follow that template. Uh, those are the instructions obviously you can either read them or throw them in the bin whatever your preference is little bag of screws which you must use to retain the IP rating of the unit it comes in a little paper bag that's the white cover you can come in, they come in black or white I've gone with the white one and then that's the CT clamp that if it's the first device you're installing you can use that CT clamp to get your grid supply but I'm using the Harvey so that's the Zappi itself in grey and that's the cover, sorry, that's the cable holder. So when you wrap the EV cable charger, this big black cable that's coming out of the box now, when you wrap that around the unit, then that stops the cable from falling off. So that's pretty straightforward, that's what's in the box. Um, we've got the EV charger itself. Nice empty box now. I'm checking I've cleared it all out. And then we've got the cover to stop the or the, the cable tidier thing. We've got the CT clamp instructions and a little paper bag with the screws in there and the cover. So not huge amounts in the box, but all enough to get you going. It's four screws that come with the unit, which I say you must use, and those four metal plastic washers to retain the IP unit, IP rating, sorry. And then the four little screws that hold that cable tidier on the back, and I failed the first test and tried to put it on the wrong way around. So then you just simply screw that on, and I'd advise you do that now, otherwise you'll forget to do it and attach it to the wall and have to take it off again. So that's it, that's the unboxing. Just take you through the um, what's inside the EV unit in itself. So I'm just going to take off the three, six, seven, eight screws off the front, and then we'll have a look and a quick look inside and show you how uh, where the fixing screws are. So the front you can see is attached by that riven cable, which I'm failing to take off one-handed. Uh, and then inside itself, you can see the charging cable coming in. The orange and white connections are the CT connections, which you would have connected to your grid or your solar or your battery, but I've got a Harvey, so I'm not going to be doing that. And then the large block on the right hand side is where the terminals are ter uh, connected. And that circular hole I just pointed out, that's the rear entry connection. So I'm gonna bring my EV cable into that hole there. And this piece of cardboard, don't throw that away because that's your template so you know where your fixing holes are gonna go. 
So mine's going onto a wall, fixed wall in the garage. So I'm using three connections, one at the top I just showed and one on the far left and one on the far right that will fix to the brickwork and the rear entry cables coming in through that hole there. What I'm going to do here is take you through the initial setup from when you power on the unit. So I've mocked up uh, a connection on a plug just to take you through this. So where was it installed? England and Wales? Answer is yes. Was it installed before 2022? No. So I'm going to click no on this option and continue on to the next one. So this is a slave device. So I've already got a Eddy installed, which is the primary device. So this is going to be the slave to that unit. And it's disabled the integrated V hub as well. So next it's going to take us to the Wi-Fi settings, um, which I'll need to switch to my mobile phone to set up using the settings on the screen. Once you've done the initial setup then on the Zappi, you need to connect to the Zappi Wi-Fi network. You should be able to select that from the list as I've just shown there. And then type in the Wi-Fi password for your Zappi, which was displayed on the screen of the Zappi itself. And you just simply connect to that Wi-Fi network and put the passcode in and then what should happen is you will get a pop-up on your mobile phone in the case that I've got here and you'll be asked to enter a password for your Wi-Fi network and then obviously repeat the entry of that password as well just to confirm it. Once you've done that, you can set the password and then you'll be asked next to select which Wi-Fi network at home you would like your Zappi charger to connect to. So I've selected my 2 gig network, entering the password now so it can connect to that Wi-Fi network and then you can click connect and then that should pass that information to the Zappi so the Zappi can connect. Once it's connected, you'll see the connected status on the Zappi itself. So one thing that you will probably want to check is to make sure that your Zappi is running the latest firmware. So if you go into other settings, download firmware, check for updates just to see if there's anything any update that needs to be applied mine doesn't appear to need any updates on this particular device but it's good to check that and it can take quite a while to sort itself out and it's always good to be on the the latest version but in this case I think I'm good So now I'll take you through how to pair the two devices. So this is on the Zappi. So I'm going into other settings, advanced, link devices, and then put the device into pairing mode. Then I need to run off back into the house, up into the loft, and get to the eddy, and then put that into pairing mode as well. So go into the menu, down to device settings, into advanced, and then link devices, and then pairing mode, and that should pop up with the Zappi. So I have to click the tick box to accept that. And there it is. So I've got all my, I've got the V Hub, the Harvey, the Zappi, and the Eddy. So the Eddy is the master, and you can see the Zappi's got a question mark next to it at the moment. But that'll sort itself out in a minute once it's finished updating the devices. It's just about there now, so that's it. That's complete. That is now in sync. So one thing that I had when I was setting up the device was uh, CT lost. So one thing I needed to change within the Zappi was to make sure the local 
CT config was set to none to make sure that it was actually trying to use the um, the Harvey configuration and the master settings from the Eddy device itself. So I've set, set that to none, which means that it should now use the settings from the master and from the Harvey. However, once I'd set that, I still had the problem. So what I had to do was switch off the Eddy back on and on again, off and on again, and it cleared the problem. Today's video is something a little bit different from the um, smart home stuff that I normally do. So today I'm installing um, a Zappi My Energy charger uh, into the garage onto an existing uh, distribution board in the garage. So I've got some EV cable that I'm installing and I've started doing the installation of the Zappi itself onto the front of the garage wall where the, park, the car's gonna be parked. Um, on the drive. So all I've done so far is drill the hole, hole through the wall, the EV uh, cable to come through and mounted the EV charger on the wall. So I'll just take you around and show you the job quickly and then I'll give you updates as I'm going through. So this is the Hager distribution board that I'm going into. So I'm going to be putting a, an extra RCBO into that board. Um, support the EV cable and the cable run is going to go up out the top of the distribution board up across the woodwork the length of the garage and then down the other side to the front of the garage where the Zappi charger is installed so I'll give you a further update once I've got the cable in and show the connection into the distribution board itself so what I'm doing to fix the EV cable to the concrete wall upside up inside the garage I'm using these linear clips what you do is you drill a 10 mil hole 40 mil deep wrap the cable clip around the cable and then just simply knock it into the hole and it seems to hold it really well so that works really well. So this is where I've come through from the back of the charger through into the other side of the garage wall. As I've just said, I'm using these linear clips that are fairly invisible going up the inside of the garage wall. So I think it looks really nice. I've spaced them um, about 32 centimeters apart. So it's holding the cable nice and straight. Unfortunately, the wall's blown out a bit there, but I'll have to fill that in. But that looks good. Pleased with that. So I'm just starting to clip the cable across, up along the wood, the length of the garage. Uh, and I'm using a slightly different type of clip, which is which are these uh, fire performance adjustable cable clips that, again, are quite discreet and wrap around the cable and they're fairly invisible. So these I can just screw into the wooden plate on top of the wall up here uh, and again I'm spacing about 35 centimeters apart so there's no sag in the cable uh, and I'll just clip that all the way along the garage to the other end in the other corner where the distribution board is and then once I'm there I'll be back online to do the connectivity into the board Okay, we've got a finished job now. We've got the uh, EV cable clipped along from the front side of the garage, along the wooden plate, down the wall, into the bottom of the consumer unit in the garage, into a stuffing gland, and then wired into the RCBO. And I'll just take you around now to show the EV charger working. So I've now connected the EV cable into the Zappi. I just push connections in. But what I've found with this particular cable is because it's stranded, the strands buckle up. So what I've done is put ferrules on there just to make sure you've got a nice solid connection 
into the crimps. Um, so what I need to do now is connect the ribbon cable up to the front cover and just fix the front cover back on again. I have put an EV cable in here, but I'm not going to make use of the data cable at the moment. I've put it in there because the Zappi charger is in the garage, which is at the front of the house. So there's about 20 meters away from the house. So I may need to use that if I don't get a good signal. Um, so it's there just as a backup. Um, if you if you only have a Zappi, then you may need to make use of that data cable for connecting your CT clamps into those terminals there, the orange and white one, CT1, 2 and 3. But in this installation, I've already got an Eddy installed, which is connected to the Harvey, and the Harvey is doing the connection to the CT clamps for a grid, solar generation, and battery. And I'll show you that in a different video. So we've got the EV charger fully fitted, operational on the front of the garage. Switched on, as you just saw, on the RCBO. And we're generating a kilowatt of energy, which is going into the house or going up back, to, back onto the grid. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. And that's it, it's finished. What I'm going to do is set a pin code on here so nobody can steal any electricity from my charger without knowing the pin. I'm going to go into lock function. I'm going to turn this on. EV unplugged. Turn that on. Leave the default timeout as 30 seconds. And then change the code to there we go and we'll give that a go so now when I now I've got the code set up on the zappy the protection code if somebody wants to come along and charge the car then they're going to have to put a pin number in before they can do anything. One last thing I want to show you on the setup is setting the grid limit. So because I, my setup is using the Harvey, there's a maximum grid limit of 65 amps. So if you go into the advanced settings, default passcode 000, supply grid under network, in maximum import limit is 65 amps, so just make sure that that's set on your master device before fully commissioning the system. So I'll just show you the app then. So this is my my energy app up and running with the Zappi charger, as you can see, with my solar grid, house, battery. If I go into the Zappi itself what I've done is I've set the app to eco plus mode and that will charge the car as long as there's a hundred percent green energy so if I'm running completely off solar and I've got a schedule set up based on my octopus cozy tariff so between four in the morning for three hours until seven and one in the afternoon until four in the afternoon I get cheaper electricity so if the car's plugged in it'll charge the car on that cheap rate if it's plugged in outside of that then it'll just use the eco plus setting and charge the car based on the fact that there's a hundred percent or based only on the fact if there's a hundred percent clean energy so as you can see it's up and running and working now So finally then, um, looking at my energy and Zappi in Home Assistant. So Home Assistant can be installed, sorry, um, my energy can be installed through Hacks. There's an integration, my energy 
integration so I've already got this installed because I've already got the eddy obviously and everything else set up but if you want to install it yourself then you have to go into hacks and install the my energy which is pretty straightforward and then within the integrations once it's up and running you can see listed in the integrations we can see my energy and I've got four devices listed so four devices are my Eddy, which is for heating my water, the Harvey, which um, has the CT clamps going in it for grid, battery and solar. And then the Zappi charger that you've just seen me install. And then the Zappi charger has got control. So as we saw in the app, we can change it to from Eco to, sorry, Eco Plus to Eco or fast charge. And then there's various sensors and configuration and diagnostics. So what I've done with mine now is I've got on my front page, I've got um, a My Energy icon. So in here, what I can do is go in and if I wanted to, I can change the controls. I can look at how much charge has been applied during the last session, its status, in fact it's been plugged in and it's the pause is on, is the charge is on pause at the moment because it's eight o'clock in the evening, there's no sun and it's waiting for my cozy tariff to kick in at one o'clock in the morning when it'll charge. And then I can see if there's any load at the moment. So once it starts charging, then we would expect to see some wattage being accumulated here. Because it charged overnight, then I'm seeing 22.14 kilowatt hours of energy has gone into the battery. And it's using, used a startling 0.2 kilowatt hours of green power today. And then I've got uh, my eddy in here as well. So that's it. That's all I wanted to show you in there. Um, hopefully that was useful. Thanks for watching the video all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed making it and I've loved using the Zappi charger so far. I love the whole My Energy ecosystem. I think it's fantastic and really easy to use. Uh, I'm gonna do some more videos on my solar install because I've got quite, uh, quite an infrastructure of green energy around me now. Um, one thing to say about the video, I am a qualified electrician. Um, please don't be installing um, that sort of technology yourself please make sure you get a qualified electrician to come around they'll do a fantastic job they've got lots of years of experience so um, please don't try it yourself thanks again for watching and please tune into the next video leave some comments i'd love to hear what you think of the video and the technology if you're doing anything similar thanks for watching bye